And, and it's time to take it back. I'm really proud of this governor. You know, I, it's hardly enough, you know, posting the Ten Commandments. Is it going to teach anybody anything about what you said earlier or the fact that the Ten Commandments are the foundation for our legal system, which, you know, was the greatest in the world until this old Trump thing happened? It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. I find it so incredibly hilarious that that person from Fox News has stated that our legal system is based upon the Ten Commandments. And so without further hesitation, let's read the Ten Commandments and compare and contrast it to the legal system in the United States. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any grieving images. The First Amendment allows people to worship any gods if they want to or no gods whatsoever. And matter of fact, it also states that basically allows people to draw graven images as well. Thou should not commit adultery. Whether something is moral or immoral is a different question whether something is illegal or legal. And it's not necessarily illegal to basically commit adultery. Love thy neighbor. There's no rules in the books that say that you must love your neighbor. You simply have to coexist and not cause any problems. That's pretty much the only bare minimum when it comes down to this particular issue. Keep the Sabbath day holy. There is no law in the book that pretty much states that you need to work on a Sabbath whatsoever. Although a person can work on any given day of the week, there is something in the United States that is known as the Blue Laws. Now, this quotation comes directly from the Supreme Court about this particular issue, where it states right here that its requirement is a cessation from labor and its enactment the legislature has given the station of law to rule of conduct, which the entire civilized world recognizes as essential to the physical and moral well-being of society. Upon no subject is there such a coercion of opinion among philosophers, moralists, and statesmen of all nations as on the necessary a periodical succession from labor. One day in seven is the rule, found on the principle and sanctioned by science. The prohibition of secular business on Sunday is advocated on the ground that it is the general well-being is advanced, labor protected, and the moral and physical well-being of society promoted. Because of these blue laws, there are certain states where you cannot necessarily buy alcohol. Additionally, there are private businesses like Chick-fil-A that close on Sunday. So yes, on one hand, you can basically not buy alcohol at certain hours and certain businesses close on Sunday. But on the other hand, you can basically work at any day of the week if you want to in this country. There's zero law where it says you need to honor your mom and dad. Thou shall not cover thy neighbor's house. Again, there's no law that goes against the notion of covering your neighbor's house. In short, the only kind of rule I can somewhat see so far on the issue about the Ten Commandments that's actually influenced law will be the fact of the blue laws. Otherwise, the vast majority of the laws as shown in the United States are not necessarily influenced by the Ten Commandments as the person from Fox News actually argued. Look, I think, I think that we have to get over this fantasy of neutrality in institutions and schools. You either impose a Christian value or, or that vacuum is going to be filled by something else, by somebody else's values. And right now, those are the values of the teachers unions. Those are radical, progressive, secular communists. They have a crazy curriculum. They are not interested in educating our children. Mind you, our, our kids are the laughing stock of the world because our schools are falling apart. They don't teach anybody anything. Instead, they want to sexualize your kids. They want to politicize your kids. They want to turn your kids into activists. She is not entirely wrong when she stated that the far left want to politicize and sexualize kids in public schools. I'm assuming when she says that they want to sexualize kids, she's referring to books such as Gender Queer and Not All Boys Aren't Blue. Because in those particular books, 
they actually have graphic images that should not be towards minors because they were actually in the school libraries of middle schools across the country. English teacher sends out a summer reading material including gender queer. Okay? Hopefully everybody can see this, yeah? 11, 12 years old. Hopefully you like this, yeah? You guys over there, because you guys make the, the decisions over there. Okay, 11 year old. Disgusting. All right? Now, from this book, brother talking to sister, so you never tasted yourself, sister shows brother vagina slime. Then there's words blow job, gay shit. This is exactly what I would expect a pedophile to behave when approaching a child, to normalize sexual behavior, to abuse them. And this is how I see you. Stop sexualizing our kids. Stop abusing them. When it comes down to her comments about the politicization of kids, she's not wrong either because most schools nowadays that are super liberal have things like the Black Lives Matter flag. It's actually a bait and switch largely because if a parent were to complain about the fact that Black Lives Matter flag is actually a political movement, they will actually be accused of being racist because obviously you just hate black people if you don't actually agree with the movement. Meanwhile, they could actually criticize, you know, the ideas of the movement and not necessarily hate black people too. So it's kind of strange that, yes, yeah, she is correct on this particular issue. However, what she gets wrong is that we must either have the far left agenda both in public schools or have Prager-U in the Ten Commandments in our schools. And it's actually something that is known as a false dichotomy or a false dilemma because it doesn't necessarily have to be either or. We can actually have schools that don't promote any type of political ideology whatsoever, be it the left or the right, and we can actually have a school where they doesn't necessarily promote religion either. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I want to trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.